everyone, welcome back to another episode of the In Out Crowd. Even though we're still staying in, we are still very much out. This is our first episode, fresh off the back of our In Out Festival. Not last week, but the week before. And I think we're still recovering from the late nights and all the fabulous talent that we saw showcased during that. Thank you again to everyone who joined us either as part of the audience live, as part of the audience watching after we went live, and also massive big thank you to all of the amazing, outstanding, one-of-a-kind, unique, fabulous performers that joined us for a week of discussion and a week of performance. We really, really appreciate it. It was almost like our version of Tea in the Park, though maybe a bit more white wine in a coffee cup. Of course, during that week, we also launched our campaign all about LGBTQ plus mental health and encourage to discuss one another to chat about how we feel and hashtag talk it out. So I'm going to pass over to my fabulous co-hosts and in out crowd team, Eleanor and Tommy. We're going to have a wee chat about how we're doing this evening and have a wee chance to hashtag talk it out. Eleanor, how are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, actually. Um, all right, I, I'm going to admit something live here on Facebook slash YouTube. I, uh, I, I, with the grace and elegance of a fully qualified dancer, I walked straight into a door frame yesterday. Um, so my nose is a wee bit sore, but covered up in the glory of makeup. But other than that, I'm doing pretty good, actually. It's sunny, and I think the sun always lifts my mood. For sure, for sure. Yes, it's amazing how different just a little, even if it's a, a not a good change of weather, even just a change of something, you know, even when that snow came down, it was like, oh, something different. Great. <laughs> Tommy, how are you doing? Let's talk. About I'm good, yeah. I was just uh, thinking about Cheryl Cole. Uh, Cheryl Cole. It's not Cheryl Cole, it's Cheryl Crow. Like you were saying, a change. <laughs> um, a change will do you good. Uh, yes. I was reminded of that, but actually now I'm thinking about Cheryl Cole. Actually, now <laughs> I'm my hands on, but um, but no, I'm good. I um, yeah, I'm empathising with Eleanor who walked into that door frame. Oh, that sounds ouchy. Stupid <laughs> but, is what it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if you noticed, kind of in terms of where I'm at. I don't know if you noticed that when I came on screen there, I just had a big blob of moisturiser down my face there uh, that I had to just quickly like put in. Um, that, so that's where I'm at, not even realising I've got moisturiser all over my face. But no, I'm 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 doing good. That's good. Yes, um, I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. I'm I'm feeling. My, I don't know if Mercury's somewhere it shouldn't be. My sleep's been a little bit all over the place this week. Um, but again, I think that could maybe just be the the change of weather, as Eleanor said, and I'm maybe just having to adjust being a wee nocturnal badger man. I need to kind of readjust it. Okay, it's getting lighter, so I need to you know like wake up and speak to humans <laughs> for later on in the day um and of course if anyone who's watching isn't having such a good evening or a good week or a good year or a good couple of years that is completely valid we empathize with you we understand exactly how you feel here at the in out crowd and just know that it is always helpful to hashtag talk it out even when we're not able to talk it out though it's always important to look towards where we are making waves elsewhere in the LGBTQ plus community. And we're constantly making history and we're constantly making news as the weather, as Eleanor mentioned, continues to change. And with that being said, let's have a wee look at some weather. Girl. It's raining men. Hallelujah. So, first up tonight, we have got some sunny skies following some rather gloomy skies from the past. The sunny skies, of course, relating to the recent apologies from the MI6 chief for the past ban on LGBTQ plus staff. 
LGBTQ plus people were prevented from working at MI6 until 1991. The Chief of the Secret Intelligence Service, also known as MI6, has publicly apologised for its historic treatment of LGBTQ plus people. Richard Moore said a security ban on LGBT staff until 1991 had been, quote, wrong, unjust and discriminatory. In a video posted on Twitter 30 years after the ban was lifted, he said it had also been counterproductive. He said, quote, we deprived ourselves of some of the best talent Britain could offer. The MI6 chief has chosen LGBTQ plus history month to offer both praise and contrition to those who were wronged by the ban. Mr Moore, who is the only publicly identifiable member, member of MI6, said thousands of patriotic people were wrongly denied the chance to work in intelligence. We would like to thank Mr Moore for his open and honest admission of past wrongdoing from MI6 and also really thankful that he chose to be so public with this apology and especially on LGBTQ plus history month. We think it's extremely important to take accountability for past mistakes that companies and organisations have made and also be willing to move forward and make efforts to be more inclusive. Next up we have got some more sunny skies as well as rainbows all over the place though that's not really anything different here at the Inout Crowd but particularly in America because NFL player Ryan Russell has since decided to come out as bisexual. In the 101 year history of American football's NFL there has never been an openly gay or bisexual athlete to be featured in a regular season game. But Ryan Russell is on a mission to change that. The 29-year-old defensive end is a free agent following spells with Dallas Cowboys, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Buffalo Bills. While he's been sidelined with a shoulder injury in 2019, Russell has recently decided to come out as bisexual. He told BBC Sport that being bisexual didn't cross his mind as an option. Quote, I didn't know a lot about bisexuality. It wasn't a thing. I thought it was maybe a transition for people who were afraid to say they were gay and that is something that we've heard quite frequently in our community and only unfortunately furthers the often misguided opinion that bisexuality is just people who are scared to admit that they're gay rather than a valid form of sexuality expression. He also told BBC Sport, it's scary, daunting and paralysing but I've got to keep moving forward. I want to be the first, but never the last. We here at the In Out Crowd absolutely stand with Ryan Russell on his decision to come out as bisexual, and we really hope that this furthers bisexual visibility, bisexual validity, and also encourages other people who may be in sport to do the same. Now, of course, rainbows, as we mentioned, are all over the place still with LGBTQ plus history month, and we're continually celebrating that, not only the work of famous LGBTQ people, such as Ryan Russell and others that we might mention later, but it's important to celebrate all of our stories every single day. And one such organisation doing this is Unite UK, founded by the fabulous Charlotte, who has joined us tonight for a wee interview all about why Unite UK came about and how she furthered the platform to share stories of our community. It's something that is often discussed with our current affairs and we think we're going to take a slightly deeper dive for our Raisin Liaisons. Charlotte, how are you doing? Hiya, hello, it's great to see you again. So about Unite UK, just in case anyone's watching and hasn't heard about your organisation or what you do, um, do you want to just give a wee brief kind of chat about who Unite UK is? Yeah, and sure. Um, so Unite UK is an online LGBTQ plus space that basically exists to share voices of LG, LGBTQ plus people. Um, it started out with um, me back in when I was 19 um, I was really angry, really confused at what I was feeling. I was suffering with internalized homophobia and I just needed an outlet. Um, I come from a very conservative small village 
and it was really hard for me to express my sexuality. Um, so I turned to the internet. I didn't want anyone to know it was me. Um, so <laughs> therefore it was on Unite's page. And I really just discussed sexuality and just how I was feeling. And from there, it really grew into a space where I realized other people needed that support because now I'm 100% like okay with my sexuality on obviously with my internalized homophobia I still have days um but I'm like a lot stronger in myself I love myself a lot more um so I kind of like in the last three years changed unite to like help others get to the stage that I'm at not that I'm at my ending point um but it's very much to celebrate the journey we go through and celebrate sexuality gender identity and just like embrace that part of being like queer really um so yeah through unite we share stories we share coming out of stories you just share all different narratives and i think it's really important to explore it because if it wasn't for the internet i wouldn't have known that i identified as lesbian like it's simple things like that and coming from a small village it really helped me um grow yeah that's amazing um particularly i think around lockdown there's been so much discussion around um, mental health for LGBTQ yeah. plus people and I think that even just seeing another story that might be similar to yours or just seeing someone else who might be going through something um, that you are as well it's like okay I'm not alone <laughs> yeah it's just it's silly things like just knowing that sexuality is fluid like we talk about it a lot on Unite um, and we have like a quiz that will help you like determine your sexuality obviously it's never going to be 100% um, but it's a really good starting place for people to go on and just answer some questions and get a result and be like oh this could be what I identify as um, and then we get in touch with them and we have like a chat and it's it's helped really in lockdown because people are trying to understand their sexuality a lot more I don't know if because people obviously have more time on their hands um, but we've had loads of discussions with like queer individuals that are trying to learn about sexuality as well as allies like I've noticed like an influx of allies trying to actually be a part of um the movement which has been really great because we have like obviously a lot of resources to help them and just like real stories um so yeah i've noticed in lockdown there's been like a lot of discussions going on just trying to understand and educate more um so it's been really great in terms of that yeah that's fantastic that's great to hear about allyship as well i think if anything's taught us in 2020 it's the importance of yeah allyship you know it's not it's not just watching rupaul's drag race and go to fight, <laughs> you know, even though they're great but yeah there is a lot of yeah understanding and education around that as well definitely definitely i agree yeah so you'd mentioned about internalized homophobia and i think that's a really brilliant talking point in case anyone watching isn't aware of what that is, could you kind of in your own words describe what that means for you? Yeah, I think for me internalised homophobia, because it's so different for each individual, so I'm just going to talk about my personal experiences, but for me internalised homophobia was like this intense hatred, I guess. That's the only way I can describe it, is that I would do anything in that point in time not to be gay. Um, I had a girlfriend and it was really confusing because I loved her so much, but I also didn't want to be gay. I didn't want to be in a lesbian relationship. And it's one of the reasons why I didn't say I was a lesbian for a long time, because I feel like at that time, lesbian was quite hefty. It holds like a lot of um, weight to it, <laughs> in my opinion anyway. And I think um, I just battled with this constant like guilt of being gay. Um, and I had to really go through some like self-loving processes and understanding my own sexuality and what it meant to me as like a femi lesbian. Um, not like I classify myself as femi, but I am to the world. So I have to like understand that label. Um, so it's, yeah, it's been a really strange journey. And I think in the last year, which is crazy because I've been running Unite for four years now, um, but only in the last year or two is I'm actually confident enough in my sexuality. Like it's been that, battle with this hate to be gay this like embarrassment um to actually be a lesbian um, and that stems back from my environment growing up um and it's just understanding that obviously my family had nothing to do with it I think it's that weird connection in my I've told my mom about it. she's like oh what did we do wrong it's like you didn't do anything wrong it's just society that we live in like um so yeah I, I think to summarize my internalized homophobia it was just this intense embarrassment hatred to the fact that I was different and that difference was me being gay um and I just wanted to fit in really which I realize now is very boring but back then when I was a teenager um, in my early 20s like that that's exactly what I wanted to to do 
Of course, yeah. I mean, as you say, when you're a teenager, even for, for me personally, I was actually reading a couple of stories on Unite's like Instagram page. And what was really refreshing was that, um, you know, we, we do a lot of work in, in schools well, pre-lockdown and there's quite a lot of young people that we work with that are kind of out and proud and they're very you know open to their gender and their sexuality and talking about it and I still wasn't yeah. being like 23 24 but reading some of the stuff on your page on Unite's page it was quite refreshing to see that quite a lot of people it was really in their 20s 30s even later that they really got into their groove so to speak um, and I think that that's yeah, really mind yeah. you don't have to have it all figured out by the age 19 or 20 you know yeah, I think I think I'm like so envious. So obviously I'm really happy for people now that are in their teens, like early teens, but I'm so envious because I wish that was me. Um I wish I could turn back the clocks and not almost like because not that I've had years stolen away from my girlfriend, but we've had years stolen where potentially we haven't gone and done things um because I was just so ashamed. Um so it's almost like I wish I could just go back like four years ago and just take back like the start of my twenties. Um, and change it because I would have done a lot of different things um, and made it a bit more gayer I guess. Yes <laughs> I think we're all the same you know as well in, in that respect there's always times that we wish we could have had the chance or the courage or the break or whatever word you want to insert um, to be honest about who we are earlier but um, I think as well I mean I don't know kind of what you think about this but you know there's a lot of we've discussed on the show before about how it's easier for people to come out now than it was you know even 10 years ago and I do agree with that to a certain extent but I think even now it is kind of relatively accepted for most people to come out it's there's still that internal, as you said, it's that internalized thing of it's fine for other people yeah. it's not for me and it's weird for me and it's yeah, that. <laughs> that that's the thing. Like I think people are like, um, like my mom will say to me, or like my relatives will say to me, like, um, oh, things are great, like things are improving, like you've got equal rights. And for example, just being a lesbian, um, people obviously see lesbians and they're like, oh, we accept that. But lesbians are quite fetishized and sexualized, mm -hmm. and yep. that's not acceptance. So it's like, was yes, we may have the rights, the mind views aren't there all the way, um, and like especially for lesbians. I get sexualized well not not as much now that we're not going out as much um but the the times that me and my girlfriend have gone out we've been like groped we've been like harassed and it's like that's not acceptance in my eyes like that's harassment um so it's very much like whilst things are getting better and people may feel more comfortable in coming out and being more themselves there's going to be other issues that may stop them or may cause like internalized homophobia so it's just like really just treating people with respect and just getting back to that space where people are people um but yeah there's there's always going to be different factors but i do think things are better it just needs to go a step further and make things a bit more accepted and equal um i think is the best way for me to put it yeah oh completely yeah big difference between like tolerance and respect and inclusion you know yeah definitely yeah i agree so with regards to kind of Unite's work, that's not all you do. You also host a podcast as well um, yes. called Les Talk. And would you like to just, yeah, again, a bit of a brief introduction to what that's all about? Yeah. So me, my, so obviously Unite changed into a platform where I was talking about other people's like topics. Like I wasn't focusing on myself. Not that I'm so egotistical that I need somewhere to talk about. But obviously I've had this space where I was talking about things and I was saying to my girlfriend, like, I just want a space where me, you can go on and just chat um and so one night I just brought a microphone I got some Jaeger we did Jaeger bombs um and that's how my podcast was formed <laughs> I wish it was like some really in-depth story but we just it really like this podcast is where me and my girlfriend go on and chat and through like us just chatting we've like discovered things about ourselves we've like joked about it before but we like see it as like a, a version of therapy because we're talking about like queer topics that potentially we don't speak about out loud like um a topic we spoke at the first start of our season season three was about virginity as a queer woman um and how virginity is seen as like a lesbian is like just because um, I've never slept with a man. Am I still a virgin? So it's like having these actual chats and speak, saying them out loud. Sometimes we just sit there and like, wow, okay, like we've just actually found something new about us. And obviously that's great. After six years, we can still find things um, new about each other. But yeah, it's it's a really nice space that me and my girlfriend have just created to talk about it. And it's really nice to um, 
see so many other queer women relating to it and feeling like they have a voice. I think sometimes queer women feel a bit in, like invisible within the LGBTQ plus community. Um, so it's really nice for just, even if we just have like a small community, it's just great that we can be a part of that um, and help people through whatever they're going through um, and talk about these queer women topics that sometimes might get ignored. Yeah, absolutely. It's something that we kind of discussed on the show before as well. Um, last year was we had two uh, bisexual women on talking about um, bisexual kind of erasure and bi visibility, um, but specifically for kind of bi women. Um, and it's that attitude towards, you know, if you, well, you're either straight or you're not. And it's that kind of thing, again, what you're talking about on Unite's page is that yeah. they're allowed to be fluid and they are totally fluid and things may change from year to year or whatever and people can identify in, in different ways. Definitely. I think that's what's really lovely about things. Yeah, like I think it's really, I think it's just, yeah, I was just going to say, I think it's really important to just like know that sexuality is like your own. And it's like, if you're experiencing something that's your experience and it's valid, I think um, a lot of things with labels, sometimes you can maybe feel alienated if you don't tick all the boxes and you can still be valid within that label, um, but you're just experiencing it a certain way. Um, and I think people sometimes feel like they need to be re very regimented um, and it's really not sexuality is unique to you, yourself. Like I identify as a lesbian, but if me and my girlfriend said the same definition, it may be different. Um, so it's like, it's very much like it's, it's to your own um, of what you experience really. Totally, yeah. And for me as well, um, and, and for me, gender is very fluid, but for some other people, it's, it is very binary. And I think, yeah. I think again, that's what's, what's really great if we can encourage it, our community and what unite um, seem to be doing is that like it's all individual and it's all valid and even if it's not necessarily the same viewpoint it's it's kind of what makes our community so lovely is that we're yeah. all kind of under this little rainbow umbrella but we've all got our own kind of definitions and ideas and you yeah. know people want the labels and some people want no labels but it's all about that inclusion and respect aspect to it yeah I think one of my like major mile like kind of thought processes and just views in general is that even if I don't 100% understand something I would always accept it if it's part of the LGBTQ plus community and then I'll do the research and education to get to the point where I'm like this is what this means and I can then go out and be an ally to that community I think it's very I see within our own community sometimes people are like I don't get it I don't accept it it's like at one point that was like a lesbian is like even though lesbians is a well accepted term like at one point it wasn't and it's like very much like I have to do the work as an ally within the community um so even if like because I get messages daily about like sexuality labels that I've never heard of before and it's like wait I've actually got to go out and now and do my research and think about what does this mean um, and fit that into like the content going forward. So the community is ever growing and I think it's a beautiful space really um, to find yourself um, and I support anyone that does it um, and I'll do it to my best of my ability, I guess. Amazing, amazing, it's great. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to not only be there for our own kind of little faction of the community, but be allies to one another because it's not like you just get a little badge saying, you know, you're you're non-binary and you're also an ally to, you know, gay men and lesbians. On you go, it's like, no, you yeah. need to <laughs> Have the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It like it, I know it's cheesy, but that's like why Unite is called Unite to unite together, like to be one united front, um, and almost like go out into society and say, This is what we are, this is who we are. Um, but I always feel really cheesy saying like unite together. I don't know why, it just it just <laughs> makes me feel a bit <laughs> no, it's true though. It's you know, there is oftentimes with any sort of community like ours, there is sometimes that kind of infighting, you know, even just amongst them um, like women, you know, and um, when I still use she her pronouns, there was just so much kind of you know tearing other women down and same with you. And it's and it's just it's all about just supporting especially those that are closest to you, and then yeah. I think that's really what makes the difference and there's no point in having our own community kind of at loggerheads with one another we've got to definitely come together yeah definitely I think it's that's the only way that we can keep going forward really is that we just support each other going forward and obviously you're gonna get hit barriers um it's just talking through those barriers and trying to find like a middle ground if there is a middle ground sometimes there isn't but it's just making sure that everyone feels seen um i think that's something really important um and as like a young queer i have that feeling of never being felt seen 
and so we understand it and it's like I try my best to make sure that everyone feels like they can come on unite and have that voice um they don't feel like they have absolutely with that being said um when you first what age were you when you first started unite sorry oh I think I was like 19 um yeah so I I either I was thinking it was like 19 20 off the top of my head um and I came out at 18 I think oh it's the years are just merging together oh, now. No, I mean, it's um still, you know, September 2020 to me so. I know but I know I came out at 18 because my girlfriend came over for my 18th birthday party for the first like time going out um and that was the time I actually came out because I was like oh mom there's a girl from Ireland coming over for my 18th and she was like why is there a girl from Ireland coming over and I was like just don't worry about it like don't think about it too much um so yeah around like 1920 I'd say that I started Unite um to pretend yeah around that age yeah so if you could go back and give say 16 year old Charlotte some advice or some words of wisdom is there anything in particular that you'd tell her yeah stop having boyfriends <laughs> <laughs> just stop it you're not really enjoying it um it's not for you I think that's the best advice and just like obviously learn to love yourself um which sounds really cheesy but I've hated myself for a long time um and if she could see where I was now like living in a flat with my girlfriend and cat like it's quite unbelievable that even like two years ago I didn't believe I could have this um so sometimes I just have to sit back and be like wow we got here um it's really surreal and it's really nice to feel it that's one of the best answers that we've had. Sorry, <laughs> like we're not. We're always asking. It's always really lovely, but just like, oh, just stop going at me, guys. Just stop it. <laughs> yeah, it was just. It's like it just would have helped me so like quicker if I just gave it up and just stopped like pretending to be straight. Um, because like you know, and you know, in yourself, and you're just like, oh, it's nothing. Like I'm just gonna ignore that. Um, no, just accept it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What are yeah. your kind of wishes and hopes for our community moving forward as we sort of come out of lockdown and just in the years to come? See, like, there's so many things that I wish for. I wish for everyone to be seen and equal at the moment. Um, I see a lot in the media and I, I read a lot about it, like about trans and non-binary individuals being attacked. Um, <clears throat> in the media and just like, obviously you've got certain groups, I'm not going to say their name, but you've got certain groups um that exists and I just want them to stop like I know that's like sounds really like neat but I just want them to stop and like understand and to come together as a community because what's happening now is just not right and it's not it doesn't sit right with myself and it's like I want to learn how as an ally within that community as well how I can do more I want to like push more and I think in the next five years I just want to see more done for the trans and non-binary community I want to see them at the point where lesbians are now, let's say like in comparison with myself, I wanna see them where they can feel comfortable to go out on the street and just be them true selves without having to worry about what's going to be said. Um, I think that's really important for me um, to fight that fight and just see that happen really. Yeah, that's really lovely to hear, Charlotte. Thank you so much. I hope that too as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think, it's, well, I think it's, it is easier easier for someone like my, myself and again it's kind of coming back to that kind of um, you know the general misogyny I think that we that we see but being someone who is kind of assigned female at birth if I go out you know in kind of androgynous clothing people think oh it's a tomboy you know I think it, it, it is easier it doesn't make that any better a sentiment but yeah. it is, it's safer um, than if someone who um, someone assumes to be male wants to wear a dress you know even if a cis male wants to wear a dress that's seen as an, an act of complete you know heinousness yeah it's just like I really wish that like it's it's my parents era um but things like drag race I, I try to get my dad to watch it he's like I'm not watching that and it's just like I want that attitude to kind of calm down a bit and for them to like I like I'm always trying to educate my parents but I just want that era to like understand and obviously that comes with education and open talks um I recently um well I have recently started working for Gay Star News um and through that I'm going to be like working on like more community stuff um, but really talking to allies um, and I'm really going to try push the ally side of things because I think it's really important that allies see the community for what it is and understand the struggles I know when I speak to my parents about certain things they don't think it happens um, and I have to like remind them like no this happens but 
I'm in a somewhat privilege because what happens to me as a lesbian might be minute to what happens to someone else. So it's like understanding each individual unique journey and pushing um, for an equal world, which geez, it's, it might be a long way away, but I am, I'm seeing like moves like um, Spain has recently looking at um, adopting its like identity forms, including like trans and non-binary on it. So things are happening. It's not happening at a fast pace, but things are happening. And we can only keep hoping that it just keeps ticking along and things start to go the right direction. Absolutely. And I'm sure with um, the work that you're doing with Unite and Gay Star News and also your podcast, that's part of what helps keep it moving forward. So thank we you. We can only hope. Thank you for your service <laughs> to our community. You're Charlotte. welcome. <laughs> Is there no, it's... Um, if people want to find you on your websites or social medias or anything, um, feel free to kind of share that with people now. Yeah. So if you want to follow Unite, it's Unite UK underscore one. Um, and if you go to my personal profile, which is Charles Summers UK, um you can basically find all like the platforms that i'm working on at the moment fabulous we do encourage people to go to unite read the stories even share your own story if you wish yeah um, please please get in touch with it doesn't like we don't look at followers or anything like that it's a story we want to hear voices um so if you have a story to tell or even if you just want to say something please come over and chat to me like i'd be more than happy to to share anyone Awesome. Thank you so much again, Charlotte. And um, thank you to Charlotte's um, kitten and girlfriend in the background for giving technical support. <laughs> thank you so much to Charlotte for her time there. We really, really appreciate you chatting to us here at the In Out Crowd about all the fabulous work that Unite UK does. And of course, all the fabulous things that Gay Star News does, as well as your podcast, Les Talk. We'd like to encourage people to go ahead onto Instagram and follow Unite UK and perhaps even send one of your stories to Charlotte and the team to share. Now, some of the things that we chatted about there, historic treatment of LGBTQ plus people, both in our weather segment and touched upon with Charlotte, is something that we'd like to take another look at for a bit of a hot topic. Eleanor, what is this week's hot topic that you're going to share with us? Thanks Alex. So today we're going to take a quick look at a time in history when discrimination against workers from the LGBTQ plus community was not only allowed but actually actively encouraged in government service. This period in mid 20th century America was known as the Lavender Scare but it was reflected here in the UK too. We'll start by looking at the US, where in 1953, President Eisenhower declared gay men and lesbians to be a threat to security of the country and therefore unfit for government service. In doing so, he triggered a huge witch hunt. Over the next four decades, thousands of government workers would lose their jobs for no reason other than their suspected sexual orientation. They would dig into the suspected workers' lives and ask neighbours, friends, colleagues to give them evidence before bringing their suspicions to the worker directly. Many risk being exposed publicly during a time that it was so difficult to be out. So as a result, some simply resigned instead of being outed and fired. Lavender most likely derives from an old taunting phrase saying that gay men had a streak of lavender, making reference to an effeminate way of acting. The name itself, Lavender Scare, was related to the American Red Scare, where they put anyone they suspected of being a communist on trial. Their concern extended to gay men and lesbians, so-called infiltrating the government services because they believed they were more at risk of blackmail. There was no evidence of this ever happening, however. But inadvertently, the US government actually helped ignite the gay rights movement in America as the dismissed LGBT workers started fighting back against the Lavender Scare and protesting against their dismissal. Now, I mentioned that the Lavender Scare had an effect across here in the UK, especially as the British media got involved. In 1963, the Sunday Mirror paper offered its assistance <clears throat> to the security service. They ran the headline, How to Spot a Possible Homo, and for MI5's benefit, they suggested supposed signifiers of male homosexuality. A gay little wiggle, 
his tie had the latest knots and an, un an unnaturally strong affection for his mother. All these things sound absolutely ludicrous today. The Guardian's former security editor suggested that LGBTQ plus people would be targeted to become opposition spies as they could keep secrets and tell lies. This association between homosexuality and secrecy meant that gay characters regularly appeared in Cold War era spy fiction, such as John Le Carre's The Spy Who Came In From The Cold and Tinker Taylor's Soldier Spy. However, fast forward to 2016, and MI5 was listed by Stonewall as number one of the 400 best places to work for, LG for LGBT people. The organisation has clearly come a long way. And as Alex mentioned earlier, another British secret um, service organisation, MI6, has recently publicly apologised for all of its past discrimination against our community. There is an absolute ton of information out there about the Lavender Scare, be it through books, films and podcasts. But I had personally never heard of the era until hearing a podcast last year, as it wasn't mentioned in my schooling whatsoever. Hopefully, with the new LGBTI curriculum that we talked about last week, rolled across, out across Scotland, more history like this will be hopefully well known. Also, let us know through our socials or at hello at shapercaper.com if there's any subjects you want us to dive into during our Hot Topics se segment. Back to you, Alex. Fabulous, Eleanor. Oh, that was so in-depth. I'd heard of the Lavender Scare, but I didn't realise the ties to, like, spy work and all that. That's really quite, oh, it is quite scary. Yeah. But thankfully, we're not at that stage anymore in the UK, but mainly because we've got so many queer icons to thank for bringing light to our community, for bringing all sorts of fabulousness to the mainstream as well as to us. And we're going to have a wee look at some of these queer icons on this next segment, which is, of course, Let's Get Quizzical. Let's get quizzical, quizzical. I want to get quizzical. We have got Let's Get Quizzical. Are we feeling lucky today, everyone, for our quiz? Sure. How do we get this on? Mm -hmm. So we're going to be zooming in on some fabulous queer icons of past, present, and maybe even future. And then we're going to try and guess who they are. So let's start off then with one from the past. So it is, who is this? Zoomed in. Little sideburn. Well, I, I, I think I might have this one off the bat. Going in confident. Is it Freddie Mercury? Is it Freddie Mercury? It is Freddie Mercury. Oh, and all of his topless glory there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, Freddie Mercury, we mentioned him in one of our latest blogs called their heart and history and we talked a little bit about Freddie Mercury and the sort of light that he brought to the music industry and also to the LGBTQ plus community but I think it's no secret I mean he's just he is the king of queen as as I called him <laughs> all righty so next up we have got one of the present who is this beautiful red lipstick gorgeous teeth yeah is it Laverne Cox? <gasps> is it Laverne Cox? It is Laverne Cox. Now, this is like nice. a personal, this is like my number one celebrity crush. Like, she is just, <laughs> oh, stunningly gorgeous. Yeah, Laverne Cox. So she has featured in uh, documentaries such as Disclosure. She was um, found some kind of fame in Orange is the New Black. That's where I first kind of became aware of her. And she's since became a real trailblazer for trans actors and I mean she's just gorgeous I mean Beyonce wishes as far as I'm concerned <laughs> all righty next up this one's a little bit more um tricky and it is a zoomed in who is this she is she she goes by she she is 
a comedian. Yeah, she was on a podcast that I was listening to recently, uh, but her name has, is escaping me. Mm-hmm. <gasps> American. Is, um, is it, um, oh, from Here? Sex in the City? Uh-huh. The incredible moment where Carrie decks it on the catwalk. Um, <laughs> Ma- uh, Margaret Cho. Margaret Cho? It is Margaret Cho, yes. <laughs> I know it's one of those ones that it's like, you know who she is, but it's like, oh, I just can't remember, like, you know. But yes, so Margaret Cho is bisexual and is very open about her sexuality and she also featured in a really fantastic i'll see if i can find the article actually and link it a really fantastic um, article about queer asian americans and she was she's really uh, keen on pushing the visibility for queer asian americans which i think is absolutely amazing and she's stunningly gorgeous and yes. really funny as well now we have got another one zoomed in again nice smile black hair she is also she. This one is not ringing any bells for me. No, I'll give you some yeah. clues. So she's an actor. She's been in a lot of things. She, her career's been quite long. Uh, she featured in one of my favourite ever films, which was The Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> also comedian, very vocal against Trump. Oh, um... Rosie O'Donnell? It is Rosie O'Donnell, yes, Ooh. Rosie. Oh, yes, so she has been an out and proud lesbian for a long time. She featured in a really fantastic article which we were talking about before we went on air which was about coming out in Hollywood and it was lots of LGBTQ plus actors and other people in Hollywood talking about their experiences of coming out at different times through Hollywood and she talked about that as well. She's really fantastic, really funny and lots and lots of films and if you haven't seen Flintstones Viva Rock Vegas I highly recommend because she plays Betty and she's brilliant. So finally, we have got our very last one. Very last one. Who is this? These are two queer icons of the present and also future. What beards? Eh? I know. The beard I'm going to leave like... this one to Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> is that me? <laughs> It is, of course, the legendary uh, first ever BBC Two artist in residence and artistic director of Shaper Caper Thomas Small, and also a uh, singer from the widely successful The Overtones, Mark Franks. Yes, so they are two fabulous current icons to me. They're an icon, I'm sure, to everyone watching that as well. Mark Franks, we love you. <laughs> that brings us to our caper conclusion. Thank you so much to everyone who joined us tonight watching the In Out Crowd live. Thank you to everyone who's going to join us after we've already been live. And thank you as well to Charlotte for joining us for an interview. We really appreciate your time and we really appreciate all the fantastic work that Unite UK does for our community. Also, if you have been affected by any issues that we've raised tonight, please do look below in the comments there for any organisations that we've listed that can offer help, support or advice, such as LGBT Youth Scotland. And we'll also link some charities and organisations for people that might not be young people anymore. Not looking at myself there, of course. We will be back with the In Out Crowd, not next week, but the week after. We'd like to give final thank you to National Lottery Heritage Fund and LGBT Youth Scotland for their support for the In Out Festival uh, in the last two weeks. And of course, thank you to the Cora Foundation for allowing us to continue with the In Out Crowd now. But with all of that being said, it's quite late on a Monday and we're going to let you go. Yeah!